X is seven. Who's doing the second one? Me. Ash, hit me. One up over A to the Yeah. You're on fire, sister. Who's doing the third one? Corey, hit me. B squared. Nice. Who's doing the fourth one? Seamus, hit me. One over M. Any questions? All right. Now, number five. Emma, hit me. X squared. Number six. Boy, I'm seeing the same hand go up a few times. Corey, hit me. One divided by X cubed. One over X cubed. Nice. Louis, seven. N. N. Uh, Liam, eight. Yeah, look at you. You's on fire, too. Oh, Ayla, nine. We need a fire extinguisher. Um, end of the six. End of the six. Absolutely right. Uh, ten. Carl. One over, um, One over Z to the sixth. Nice. I'm not sure what this strange word Z means, but... Zebra. Other people, yeah. other people use it today, too, so it must mean something. My mother says zebra, and it actually bothers me. Even though my mother says zebra, and she says, instead of behemoth, she says behemoth. And it bothers me. Even though, she's, even though she is technically right, it bothers me. And it bothers all my friends who make fun of my mom. Because they, they imagine zebras and behemoths running around my mom's house. Um, what? Well, no, they just don't. They make fun of the way she says zebras and behemoths. It's not dislike of my mom. It's just like you guys make fun of my bad jokes, even though you all love me. No, no you do. I know you do. It's okay. It's like when you threw rocks at girls in grade three that you liked. Some of you still do that, even though you're in the 10th grade. That's, it's, it's very interesting to me. I always have that joke. Girls always come to me in high school. It's like, man, Mr. Myers, boys are such tools. Yeah, I know. I don't know why they treat us so badly. Because they like you. What? Yeah, it's what they did in grade three, but they didn't grow out of it like, you know, guys my age grew out of it. We stopped throwing rocks at girls around grade seven. And then tried that really weird idea of talking to a girl you liked, which is just... Anyway, number 11, who's up? Raul, hit me. End of the 12th. Uh, uh, 12, who's up? Corey. One over... One over C4. Boom! C4, get it? Ah. Yeah! Kieran, 13. That's a toughie. It's a mean one, I know. But just try. Pardon? Yes. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, no, I, I hear what you're saying. No, no, no. You were supposed to write it as an exponent. Okay. So what is it? Which I would also accept, of course, 3 to the 12th over 5 to the 12th. Both those are the same thing. Nice. Okay. Um, 14. Who's up? Christian, what you got for 14? A squared over B squared. Oh, you guys are on fire. Everybody. 15. What? Because it's made of NaOH? What? Why do we need a fire extinguisher? Good. That's a good use of your time. How are your exponents going? Okay. 15. Chandler, hit me. Ooh. Close. It is N to the 6th, and it is over M, but what is it? Three, because there's no exponent with the M. Excellent. Now, Chandler, I notice, is making a change on his piece of paper because he now knows that that's something he didn't do right, and he's fixing it. Way to go, buddy. Solving your problem. 16 is the hardest question on this page. D8 over C8. Because there's more than one way to do the question. Right? Seamus... How did you get to D8 over C8? What did you do? Well, 
So Seamus said that since the exponent is negative, he must have to flip the base. So when he flipped the base, he got D2 over C2. And of course, once you flip the base, what happens to a negative exponent? It becomes positive. Thanks, brother. You're welcome. And then, of course, D8 over C8. The other way you could have done this question is, of course, just distributed that in. C to the negative 8 over D to the negative 8. And then said to yourself, self, I'm not allowed negative exponents. So that one must have had to go down there, and that one came up there. Either way works. Uh, 17. A kid in the earlier class messed with my head. He said, don't ask me about number 17. And then I gave the answer to number 17. He's like, that's what I got anyway. He was messing with me. Would anybody not like to be asked about number 17? So I can ask anyone about 17? Sure I can. Who am I going to ask? I'm going to ask Dana. What's number 17? Just try. There's nothing. Okay. No, I know you know. Shamir, hit me. 4B squared over 25C squared. Nice. Where did 4 and 25 come from? I can see quite plainly that it's 2 and 5. Corey? You square 2 and 5. Why do I square 2 and 5? Because it's simpler. Mm, 4 and 25 are simpler than 2 and 5? The exponent is outside the bracket, so the 2 and 5 are part of the base. So they are getting squared as well. Okay? Okay. So number 18, now everybody should be able to do number 18. What is it? 9a squared b squared. Nice. 19. This is taking a little while too long, and I want to take some time with the more uh, complicated ones. So I'm just going to start taking over here. If you need me to stop, stop me. Everybody okay with what they see? Everybody. All 20 of you. Sweet. Turn the page over. One. Now, this question, some people in the other class read this X as another variable. So they said A to the seventh X, which is fine. Other people saw that it was, thought it meant times, and they just wrote a to the seventh. Depending on how you read it, they're both fine. I don't care. To the eighth, b to the twelfth. A lot of people forgot that that exponent is what? One. one. This one, a lot of people screwed up because they said, oh, x, there's no other x's. Oh, but it's way over here. Does order matter in multiplying? No, so this is still multiplying x to the third times x to the fifth, which is x to the eighth, and y to the fifth. This one is 1 over a, b squared, and this one is a, 8, b, 12. An important vitamin that many of us are lacking. Everybody good with the easy ones? I lie, that's the wrong word. Sorry. Everybody good with the less complicated ones. Because, of course, they're all easy because all we're doing is adding, subtracting, or multiplying. We don't even ever have to divide exponents. We just have to add, subtract, or multiply them. Yeah? Everybody's good? 100%? Yeah, that's the stuff. Moving on. Uh, do I need to do anything before number four? Or are people feeling confident enough from what they saw in the first two pages? Yeah. Everybody is confident with the first three? All right. So let's have a look. Even number four is not too hard. What's the first one? 
Well, I keep my X's together and I keep my Y's together. So that is X. What do I do with the three and two? Minus. Three minus two. And what do I do with the five and four? Minus. What's three minus two? One. one. Do I write one as an exponent? No. no. What is five minus four? X, y. One. Do I write one as an exponent? No. no. So it's X, Y. Were there any negative exponents? No. no. So it's done. Everybody good? Sweet. Now let's look at I. Would anybody like to give their answer for I right away? Okay, Seamus, hit me. That is absolutely correct. Why? Because negative 4 minus negative 6 minus negative 6 is the same as negative 4 plus 6, which is 2. Positive 2, so it doesn't move. 5 minus minus 9 is 14. Positive, doesn't move. Negative 8 minus minus, negative 8 minus 2 is negative 10. So I really add G to the negative 10. And then Seamus said, ho, 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 you're not fooling me, Mr. Myers. Ain't no such thing as a negative exponent. And he moved it down to the bottom. Why did he not move E and F? Because they have positive exponents. What's the only thing that's not allowed to be negative? Exponents. Can a base be negative? Yes. yes. If a base moves from the denominator to the numerator or the numerator to the denominator, do you change its sign? No, no because bases don't get affected. Gouda? Get a gummy bear. Cheddar. Yep. I liked her joke. And I want to finish that box of gummy bears. I don't have enough to do... Uh, uh, word problems because I think I only have three left. So I'm doling them out when people make me go, yeah! You can go have one. I'm not joking. You thought it was a lie? Why would I lie to you, Ash? Then our, the whole basis of our working relationship would be lies. There's a lot more than three left. Is there? Yeah. Oh well, you can still have one. Just not a white one or a yellow one or an orange one. Red or green? Just take all of them. No, because then that would, again, ruin our working relationship, Louie. She took a gummy bear because I would not lie to her like I would not lie to any of you. But if she took all of them, that would be a lie to me. And that would affect our working relationship. And I don't think Ash wants to risk that. Because she's stuck here for the next three months. Every single day. For 80 minutes a day. Five days a week. It's right. Short day Thursday. Um... Number five, what is the only thing that is different about number five? There's some numbers, right? Yeah. So if there were no variables there and you were in Mrs. Bad Crumble's class back in the day, what would you do with 36 and 12? Divide. Divide them and you would get three. But we are not in Mrs. Bad Crumble's class back in the day. We are in Mr. Meyer's class in the day. And in the day, there are exponents. But fortunately, he just taught you how to deal with those exponents. What do you do with the A's? Uh, subtract. subtract. 4 minus 2 is? A squared. What do you do with the B's? Swat them so they don't sting you. What do you do with the B's? Of course, you don't swat a B because you take the sting. Because when you swat a B, you are doing a little bit to make humans extinct. Which isn't really an awful thing when you Actually, think about these it. Are not, these are a invasive species. No, they're not. No. No, there, are, there were New World bees. Some of the bees that we use are brought in invasively, but they still perform the same function, which is to fertilize, pollinate all of our crops. No bees, no humans. But there are also other flies, too. N won't be able to get the job done. No bees, no humans. End of discussion. So don't swat bees. You actually shouldn't even swat wasps, even though wasps are dicks. Wasps still do pollination, so they do actually help. Yeah, I know. Wasps will sting you because they, they, it doesn't kill them. Wasps don't have a barbed stinger. They can just go, punk, 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 punk. And wasps are carnivorous. They even bite, so they can get you with both ends. That's why they're such dicks. But a bee doesn't like to sting you because it'll kill you. As you've all seen the bee movie, you know at the end of the bee movie where the guy has his ass 
bandaged up and he's been to the B hospital. That doesn't happen. The B is dead. Yeah. I'm sorry. That is true. The B dies. In reality. Of course, it's a cartoon where bees talk and have a whole empire of making honey. So you've already suspended your disbelief anyway. Now, back to the business. What do I do with negative two and three? What do I do with number two and th- negative two and three? Subtract it. Now, guys and ladies, earlier today, my grade 10 class had some issues with some simple math. Um, I won't say what it was, but it was a little hurtful to me as a math teacher in British Columbia that it took my class that long to answer that. So I've been talking this long in hopes of allowing you to do the calculation in your head of what negative two minus three is. So all of you, all of you can give me an answer when I finish talking. I'm going to keep talking until I believe that every single one of you has been able to do negative two minus three. Some of you may even have needed to go to your calculator to do that, but that will be okay because your calculator is in front of you and you are allowed to do that. But what is not okay is for you to give me the wrong answer to negative two minus three. (laughs) <laughs> negative five. Negative five. Whew. I'm dizzy. <laughs> what's not allowed? <laughs> Just the negative exponents. So what's the only thing that moves? The Just the B. And it becomes positive. I. I. Uh, is everybody now comfortable with six? Yeah. Okay. Let us move on to seven. Oh, seven you're comfortable with? Yeah. Let us move on to eight then, cabbages. What do you do with the numbers? They stay together. What math do you do? The math that the page tells you to do. Multiply. What is seven times five? 35. Lovely. What do you do with the A's? Add them because we're multiplying. What is 4 plus negative 1? 3. A to the 3. What do you do with the B's? Add them. What's 3 plus 2? 5. Is that okay? Why? Because no negatives where? Negative exponents. That is perfectly allowed. We're happy with it. What did you notice I did up here With that, when did I deal with my negative exponents? Last. Last, at the very, 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 very end, when I can look at it and say, that's not right. Because if I try to move it in the middle and I'm doing 10 steps, what might happen? You might screw it up. Let's try E, because E is not a multiply. E is a divide. So what would you do with the numbers? No, the numbers. You divide. Does 51 divide by 17? Of course it does. What is it? I can't do that in my head, Mr. Myers, so what do you do? Calculator, and you find that it is 3. What do you do with the letters? Subtract. What is negative 2 minus 0? Negative two. Good. You would be surprised, Justin, how many times I get a wrong answer to that question. So many. Negative two, take away nothing. Zero. Two. Fourteen. Eighty-seven. I'm just, I am serious. You would not believe how often I get a wrong answer to the question, how much is some number take away zero? It's the same number. You're not taking away See, I know that. And you know that. But there are a great many of your peers that do not know that. And they yell out numbers that are not negative two to this question. So, again, C was negative two. And what do you do with the Ds? Subtract them. 6 minus negative 1. 7. 7. D7. What there isn't allowed? So, what moves? The C, the 3, or the C? Just the C. 3D to the 7th over C to the 2. Because 
He's positive now. Yes. The sea moves. It's uh, uh, it's low tide. Stop it. Nine. Stop it. I wish he would. Sponsor. <laughs> okay. Uh, what's different in nine? No, 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 no. What's different in 9b compared to what we've been doing? Oh. Multiply and divide. Which do we do first? Whichever's on the left. Why? Because of bed mass or, depending on your grade 8 teacher, PEMDAS, depending on which you were taught. Some teachers say PEMDAS. Parentheses. Because technically, that is a parenthesis and that is a bracket. Which is stupid, though, because as you go further into math, you start needing both parentheses and brackets. So neither PEMDAS nor BEDMAS is okay. So you got to just choose one and go with it. I use BEDMAS myself because that is what I was taught in 1985. 87. When was I in grade 7? 1986. You're a math teacher. How do you not know that? In September of 1986, I entered grade 7. Yes, because I graduated grade 7 in the 87. I'm one of the lucky people whose grade equals the year that he was in. Oh. Except it wouldn't have if I didn't skip grade 1. But I did skip grade 1, so it works. So when I was in grade 2, it was 82. Oh. Even though it should have only been. It should have been 83. But because I skipped a grade, it's okay. What? What? Oh, no. I won't even say what the question was that nobody in my morning class could answer today. It's too embarrassing. So, what do I do with the 4 and the 12 and the 8? First, I do 4 times 12. What is that? Mr. Myers, I'm bad with my 12 times table. Fortunately, Mr. Myers, let's use a calculator whenever you want. What's 4 times 12? 48. Then you divide it by 8, which is what? 6. Oh, crap. Not a yellow highlighter, you dummy head. 6. What do you do with the negative 7 and the negative 5? Add them. I have negative 7, and then I am adding more negatives. What's the answer? Negative 12. And then what do I do when I divide? I subtract. So what is negative 12 minus negative 4? Negative 8. So I get A to the negative 8. What part of that's not allowed? The negative. 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6 over A to the 8. Is everybody good? Now, I don't wish to accuse you all of being liars. I don't want to do that because that's hurtful to me and you. And as Ash and I have already demonstrated, we cannot risk ruining our working relationship. So I am not going to call you that. What I am going to do instead is say, is there anybody in the room, and you don't even need to admit to it, is there anybody in the room that feels like they would like to reassess their work on 11 and 12 based on what we have done so far. That you think maybe you might have a mistake in 11 and 12. I am asking. Now, if of course you haven't done it, which is none of you people, obviously you would need to reassess right now, wouldn't you? But I know you all did the work so now I'm going to ask, would any of you like to reassess what you did and make sure that 11 and 12 are done correctly? Or can we just carry on? Okay, then. I like how that sounds. Let's. What is weird about D? There is something that you have not seen yet on any of the work that you have done up to 11D. What is it? 
Negative bases. Excellent. That is one thing you have not seen. And what is the other thing? There's two variables in the bracket. Oh, we've seen that. But what we haven't seen is an exponent with a number base in between there. But fortunately, we all went through Mrs. Vag Crumble's class and we know about bed mass. And bed mass says brackets of which we have none. Mr. Myers, I can see right up that there's brackets. Are these the brackets that bed mass is referring to? No. <laughs> you little, go have another gummy bear. Stop it. You're on fire. Those are indeed parentheses, but are they the parentheses to which PEMDAS refers? No, because these are parentheses of grouping. Yes? There is no operation in there. So there's nothing to do with those brackets first. So then we move on to the E of PEMDAS and bed mass, which is exponents. And there indeed is an exponent I must deal with. Why? Because it's outside of brackets and it applies to more than one base. Right? So where does that three have to go? To all of it. So I'm going to have negative four cubed. P what? Cubed. And Q what? Cubed. Now, what I have written there, one of those three things is written wrong right now. Which is it? Of this stuff I just wrote, one of them is not ready. The negative four, because we can assess that, can't we? We can do this. What does this mean? Negative four times itself thrice, right? So what is negative four times negative four? Positive 16. What is positive 16 times negative four? I can't do that in my head, Mr. Meyer, so where do you go? Calculator. If you are going to enter this into your calculator and you want to do it from the beginning, what do you have to remember? Brackets around the negative. And you will get an answer of what? Negative 64. P3, Q3. Now, what do you do with that negative... <coughs> Excuse me, spit in the wrong pipe again. What do you do with that negative 64 and that negative 5? Why? Yes. We don't do anything with exponents. We actually can do that. And negative 64 times negative 5 is positive 320. Yeah? Now, what do I do with P3 and P3? See how I colored them yellow? P to the 6. And what do I do with Q3 and... Oh! There's no Q. There's no Q. So what do I do? Q3. Did everybody who already told me that they did this get that one right? Yeah. Nobody needs to reassess? Lovely. Yes. I, have, I too have seen Ren and Stimpy. You do not want to whiz on the electric fence. <laughs> but you do want log from Blamo. What is different about C? Or is nothing different about C because C is the exact same as B over here, isn't it? Except it's written differently. So where do we start in C? In the numerator. What do I do with 4 and 6? Multiply to get what? 24. What do I do with M4 and M8? Uh, to get M to the 12th. What do I do with N squared and N to the 4th? Uh, to get N to the 6th. Over negative 3, M6, N6. What do I do with the numbers? What is it? Negative 8. What do I do with the first base? Minus, which is what? M6. What do I do with the second base? Minus. 6 minus 6 is? Zero. 0. Do I write n to the 0? Yeah. No. So that's done. Thank you. Lovely work.
They will be marked by the end of class because I am that efficient. What's different in F? Yeah. What's different in F? There's exponents on both terms, so that exponent has to go everywhere, doesn't it? Yeah, and n0 is 1. You wouldn't write 1. That's saying negative 8 times m to the 6th times 1. Does the 1 affect negative 8 times m to the 6th? No. No, so we don't write it. Okay? All right. What am I going to do with the first one here? Great. So what does the first number become? 5 squared. What is that? 25. X to the? 4. Y to the? 2. Nice. What does the 3 become? 3 cubed. I can't do that in my head, Mr. Myers, so I go where? Calculator. 3, exponent button 3. What is it? 27. X? 6. Y? 12. 12. What do I do with 25 and 27? Times. What is it? That's exactly what it is. That's you got 675 because that's the answer. Yeah. What do you do with 4 and 6? Uh, Add x to the 10th. What do you do with Add. 2 and 12? Add. Add y to the 14th. And how many of you did it right? All of you because nobody needed to reassess. Yeah. Right? No. <laughs> Don't lie. It hurts our working relationship. We've been through this. Now, this question was a bit problematic because of a printing error. Some people were like, Mr. Myers, are those negatives? Which I can't even show you because the stupid pen palettes in the way. Ah, yes. Those are not negatives. Those are a printing error. So, of course, that shouldn't be there and that shouldn't be there. So, what do I do with two and three? What do I do with 2 and 3? Multiply. 6. What do I do with x and x? Add. What is it? x to the 6. Even if you didn't do it, you should be able to do these right now. What do you do with y and y? Add them to get y to the 6. Nice. Over. 4. x squared y to the 5th. What do you do with the numbers? Uh-oh. 6 doesn't divide by 4. So what, do you, what would you have done in Mrs. Bad Crumble's class if you just saw 6 over 4? You would simplify it to what? 3 over 2. If you do something once in math, how often do you do it? Every time. So what does this become? 3 over 2. What do you do with the x's? What's 6 minus 2? x to the 4. Is that positive? So are we happy with it? x to the 4. What do you do with the 6 and the 5? What do you do with the 6 and the 5? Is 6 minus 5 positive? So are we happy with it? So we leave it. Do I write 1? No. Done. Let's have a look at B. What do I do with the negative 3 and the negative 4? That's what I'm going to do first. You're going to deal with that exponent out there first, aren't you? I tricked you by telling you that. And all you, oh, oh, oh. no, you're going to deal with that exponent first. Negative 3p squared q5 times what? What's negative 4 squared? Positive 16. I'm running out of gummy bears. Oh, jeez. So now I owe you one? Good. Sure. And P is what? So go get paid. P squared Q. Q3? Q3? Q. Q6. Over 8P4. Q4. Now, what do I do with 16 and 3? Multiply it to get what? 
I can't do that in my head, Miss Myers. I'm not good at my 16 time tables. So where do you go? Calculator, and what do you get? Negative 48. What do you do with P and P? Adam, P to the fourth. What do you do with Q and Q? Adam, Q to the 11th, over. 8, P, 4, Q, 4. What do you do with the numbers? What is it? Negative 6. What do you do with the P's? 4 minus 4 is 0. Do we write it? Nope. What do you do with the Q's? 11 minus 4? Anything negative? Anything negative that's not allowed to be negative? No. All right. All right, all right, all right. All right. And now, the toughest question on the page. D. Toughest question by a mile. Let's go. Does anything need to happen to that term yet? No. It's staying the same. Negative 5, x, 4, y, 5. Does anything need to happen to that term? What? Exponent. 2 gets cubed. What's that? 2 cubed, which is 8. x what? x cubed, y, 6. Over. Does anything happen there? Yes. What? Everything is squared. 10 squared is? 100. x, 6. y, 2 and 8. 16. Now where do we go? The numerator. And what parts? All of them. What do I do with 8 and 5? What is it? Negative 40. What do I do with x and x? Add, which is? X7. What do I do with 5 and 6? Add them to get? Y11. Over. 100, x6, y16. What do I do with those? Simplify to what? Negative 2 over 5. What do I do there? Subtract. 7 minus 6? X. 1. X. You don't write the 1. Now, I am going to give you people a hint for this. Right now, this is fairly easy, right? We've only done three or four steps. Everyone's cool, right? You're going to go 11 minus 6. You know that's negative 5, and you're probably going to move it right away. Does everyone agree? Now, let me give you a piece of advice because this is weird because that negative 5 is coming up at the end, and I said leave negative exponents till the end, right? What I like to do with these is I actually write the negative 5. Because in future questions, there might be more exponents. There might have been a Z in here. When I'm dealt with everything and I see I have a negative, then I move it. Everybody understand? So I would write this out, then I would fix it up. Negative 2x over 5y to the positive 5. Is everybody good? All right, now listen to me. Math or <laughs> exponent questions are not ever difficult, but they are complicated, right? The more letters we add, the more negative numbers we add, the more exponents outside brackets we add, the more yucky it gets, right? But... Those seven rules are all you ever need. Okay? So, all right, all right, all right. You'll notice the next thing on the side there is a quiz. I'm not going to give you a quiz today because you have not had enough practice. But what I am going to do is give you no homework, but class is going for another 20 minutes. So you need some work to do. 
Try these. Really? Oh, yeah, we got to go over our test. Let's do that first. No, we're not going over our toast. I love toast. Who doesn't love toast? Toast is delicious. No, burnt bread is not toast. Toast is toast. What are you putting in a toaster? Good. No, you don't put waffles in a toaster. You get, you make a... No. Yes. No, yes. you make a batter and you, and you put it in a waffle iron. A waffle maker is 20 bucks, toaster is 20 bucks. And a waffle maker also does more than one thing because you can also use it as a panini press. You can make grilled cheese in a waffle iron. My birthday's in a month and 19 days. You have a science joke for me while I get our test ready to go? That's the wrong unit. So our student went on a date with potassium today. It went... Okay. I thought oxygen was dating magnesium. OMG, I already did that one. Actually, oxygen first asked nitrogen out, but nitrogen was all like, no. Oh, damn! 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 That's that's good stuff. Uh, when you're having fun, what happens when you're having fun in space? Where does the sound go? Because you can't actually fly in space. Well. Uh, All right. How much how much room is needed for fun yeah. to As much room as possible. <laughs> Remember, these do not leave the room, but you may make corrections on them for, for your, you may make corrections on them for your future self when you want to check it over before either your cumulative or your final exam. Well, what I'm asking about to you, we turn my clock into a bar and they say, Hey, I'm not done yet. He missed the early one. What's the chicken's favorite composer? Bach. What is... Oh, why should you not invest in calendars? Because the calendar's days are numbered. <laughs> I got the wrong hands. And finally, what is brown and rhymes with soup? Dr. Gray. Yo. What? 